Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton and now we're going to cover pro division of the Nime Hay Cliffs Nine Hole Cup Tournament. So, holy cow, what a frustrating day it's been. I was in the middle of my upload on Rookie and my whole home internet went out. So now I'm having to upload the videos uh, with the hotspot on my phone. I could have been done hours ago, but now this is taking forever. But hey, it, uh, it is what it is, right? So, this is a frustrating pro round. Minus 14 is mediocre. You're gonna notice the donut on hole number two. Um, it would came down to a pool angle thing. So, you know, I'm gonna tell you what not to do, but I do have a replay that shows you how to pick up the hole in one. Um, and then hole number six, we left the albatross like literally right at the cup. So, wish we could have had those two shots back, but that's not how the game works. There are no mulligans. If you like my content, please become a subscriber. We are only four subscribers away from 2,900. Thank you so much for helping it get to this point, and let's continue to keep this baby rolling. Uh, also, take a half a second there and hit that thumbs up button and like the video for me. I would be very appreciative of that. And if you do like my content, you can always help me by supporting uh, to my channel via PayPal, which is in the comments below. Or you could even become a member, and that would be awesome too. And you can find the link to the membership in the description below. All right, so let's go to hole number one. Hole number one, in my opinion, is pretty tough, uh, just simply because we need to use a berserker, and we're going to have to go with quite a bit of overpower in order to get this ball to play correctly. So I'm going to pull this at 10% elevation. I do not push back up to max, just simply because I want to take a controlled overpower shot. But you're going to notice here, this is quite a bit of OP combined with half a ball of curl to the right. Now... We did fire away a perfect ball as well, which means we're going to get maximum distance on our drive. And thank goodness, because we're going to need it. You're gonna see this ball just die on the green, which is gonna leave us at a max distance putt. I um, you know, I could not even pull the ball any further back than this. This was full OP on a putt. Um, from here, you just, you just have to get lucky and hit perfect like I did. Uh, very difficult to do. Not easy, but we do pick up the eagle on hole number one, which is going to bring us into hole number two. Hole number two, this is a really good replay for us to study. Now, notice here I have 40% at mid, and so let's take a look at that for a moment. So power three ball, boom, 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 boom. 6.1 means we're going to be pulling this thing 8.2. One reason why I definitely don't like using the grizzly, but, um, you know, we're using it for the accuracy sense. So mid distance, as we can see, nowhere close to max. We don't need the play at max. This whole play is just fine. So we're going to be using, you know, I don't know, like 0.4 bars of backspin and a little bit more than one bar of right side spin. Now, what we're trying to do, which is what we've done in the past, what we're trying to do is use this little hill on the green to roll our ball into the cup. And we're going to have to offset in order to do so. And you want to make sure that your ball guide line is set kind of like that. And then if you wiggle, if you move your guide to the left, you'll see. So if I start right here, but I move my target to the left, you see I got a sticky spot on the green. That's what we're looking for. So now we're going to pull this 40% at mid. So we're going to pull this 8.2 rings. perfect ball and we hit the rough and we get the double roll around the cup so I'll tell you what I tried to do on my other account that you saw me take a par on is I tried to change this to a 1201 pull angle um, do not do that all right because I hit a perfect ball with the exact same setup and it missed the rough and it was a flyer. So instead of hitting the rough, I hit the fringe or the green, and the ball went flying past the hole into the deep rough. And, you know, obviously I didn't save it. So uh, play that shot with no 1201 pull angle, and you're going to be okay. You know, it was right there at pin. Okay, hole number three, 10% elevation. We're using a Titan ball with a Guardian. The reason we're using a Titan over a Kingmaker is because we're going to get back to back headwind, and we're going to need every ounce of the headwind that we can get. Okay, perfect ball. We fire that thing away. 
we're on to the fairway and we're good that's going to leave us for a max distance guardian shot for shot number two as you can see here i'm putting the back spin on until i'm nicely onto the green obviously we don't want to go past the green and into the rough so here's just a normal 10 percent pull I use a little bit of curl since I was aimed right of the pin, so curl left to try to get back towards the pin. This would really just ultimately be a lucky albatross if I was able to pick it up. But as you can see here, nowhere close. I'm just kind of chalking up hole number three as an eagle and then moving on. All right. So hole number four is uh, one that I don't have a lot of advice for you on because I tried this rough bump a couple different times and I didn't want to use the grizzly again, so I went with the goliath but I think we would probably have to use the Goliath anyways, probably because the wind angle is different. Um, with a little bit of headwind, we need a more powerful club like the Goliath in order to pull this shot off, I think. But you're gonna see here, I tried to play this one 20%. There's gonna be like 3.2 rings here. And I was just adjusting the spin until it was going to the hole. You know, in here, it's just too much right side spin. So the ball just takes off to the right. So it's about a green square short of the right. I would say we just go with like one and a half bars of side spin to the right and try to get that thing lined up to the hole. Uh, but it may be pretty difficult in order to do so. That's gonna bring us from the hole number five. Hole number five gives us a really great opportunity for the eagle. I missed it on one account, but I did pick it up on my other. And I'll show you uh, what I did to adjust my miss. Anyway, six bars at the top, full left. We're going to pull this one 10 percent elevation uh, but because of the headwind we're going to have to move our target down as we're setting up our shot so that we can flip the screen around and still pull our rings for accuracy it's going to be very important all right so we roll this one up the fairway now this is going to leave us a shot number two shot number two in this wind angle we need to play a zero percent at mid at least that's what worked for me because i played it 10 percent at mid on my other account and this ball missed to the right hand side barely so when i went there when i went into my app and i played with it if i would have played it at zero percent at mid the ball would have gone into the cup so on this account i decide to try zero percent at mid and the ball does go into the hole so that was my you know philosophy behind it but as you can see here we're dead center with zero percent at mid for an extra eagle Okay, hole number six. Boy, I wish I could have this shot back. 10% um, at max. I'm going to be using an extra mile nine. I mean, you're definitely going to want to use the driver that gives you the most top spin and most power combo. Some people might have to use a big topper, and that's fine too. I just don't like the overpower on a big topper. So you're going to see here, we're going to be pulling our rings. And I'm not pushing back up to max because, again, I want to take a controlled overpower shot. This is almost full OP, but not quite. There was plenty of fairway to work with there, so I could have got away with a little bit more OP, but you don't ever want to run the risk of accidentally missing that little island and then going right into the water. That would stink. So I want you to play this shot at 0%, and the reason that I say that is because I played it at 10%. Uh, now you're going to have to check your own distance of your club. For me, because of my drive and my yardage, I was at mid distance. You may get more yards in me and be at minimum. You may get less yards in me and be at max. So it's going to be very important that you check it. But I, this shot you're seeing is played 10%. I'm playing it at mid distance. It needs to be 0% because you're going to see here, this ball just sits right there on the cup. Um, you know, just a very minor tweak in the elevation and that ball would have been in the cup for an albatross. So that is a very, very good chance for an alba. It is always nice when we're able to go for an albatross with our wedge. All right, that's going to bring us on to hole number seven and I'm going to show you two ways to play it. Uh, yes, you can get way up there with a berserker. So a free to play ball, you can get up there with full top and a little bit of right side spin. Now, the only thing that happens here is I should have added more right side spin. As you can see here, I'm completely max overpower, and I hit a perfect ball. Unfortunately, I take a bad bounce, and I go into the rough. Now, of course, this is no harm, no foul. It still sets us up for a chip-in shot to look for the eagle. But, you know, I learned from that mistake, and this time I went with a money ball, 
and I'm only going with a money ball because I had a replay to show you there that you can definitely get some yardage on a berserker. So um, I wanted to see if I could try to pull off a, a better round and see what a money ball would do. This is a power five wind four ball. So clearly we wanna cut down as much headwind as possible, which is why I went with a wind four power five ball. This time I added half a bar, half a ball of curl to the right. And you're gonna see this shot comes in a lot nicer. We end up getting this thing to roll in really nice. And again, this is gonna leave us with a short shot for the Eagle. So I went with 0% elevation on this shot. Uh, I believe I played it between minimum and mid distance, like somewhere right in the middle there, I believe. Uh, but regardless, you know, it's always important that you check the distance of your own club because on a drive like this where we're using overpower, um, everybody's gonna get different yardage. I feel very lucky here that I hit a great ball to the right and this ball still barely snuck into the hole. Um, so that was nice because I was uh, very angry at myself and saying some very unkind words to myself when I hit that ball great, but uh, I got bailed out. Okay, hole eight, I have nothing for you to be honest. This hole is baffling me um, on pro. So I played it 20% on my first attempt and this ball missed by an eternity to the right-hand side. So I was like, what? I doubled the elevation and the shot you're gonna be seeing right now is gonna be played at 40%. So 40% elevation is this shot. The so big ring pull in only 5.3 miles an hour. But of course I hit a great shot to the left. So I'm not able to determine whether it would have worked out or not. And this thing misses by a mile as well to the left-hand side. So uh, very odd. I should have probably played the hill shot where, we, where, I, where I did in qualifying where I try to come down off the hill and into the cup to try to find that little funnel area. But um, yeah, so I would do that if I were you. That shot right there stinks and I wouldn't go for it. All right, hole number nine, you know, we're just gonna play this safe with the quarterback. We're gonna try to get onto the left-hand side of the fairway here. That way we can either try to execute one of two shots and it's gonna be whatever you're most comfortable with and I'll walk you through what both of them are. But I only have a replay for one because that's, that's what I went for. All right, so you can see here we're using curl to get this thing around and just ultimately end up over here somewhere. Okay, that's all good. Now, there's two ways you can play. One, you could bring your grizzly if you want to, and you can play off this island right there and try to um, get to the green. So with the grizzly, you're going to have a good ball guideline. But I was being greedy, and I decided to go for this rough bump here that um, – isn't probably for the faint of heart because if, if you miss it, it could be a disaster. But uh, this shot that you're seeing played is played at 10%. I didn't put a graphic there because I'm not 100% sure what the elevation needs to be, but let's watch the miss together and I'm gonna tell you what I think it should be. And I only got one crack at this because I used too much overpower on my drive on my other account and I rolled into the rough. It was still a very easy eagle save. But, so we missed this one by, you know, about a green square to the left, and that was 10%. I think we need to add a lot of elevation to this shot to make us pull more rings. Like, I want to say 20 to 25% elevation. So we need to probably double it or more than double our elevation. And the reason we need to add so much elevation is because if we're playing with the Goliath, the ring pull is very small um, from, from, from wind to wind, Okay. So for example, let's say we have five and a half mile per hour wind and we play at 10%, that's only 3.4 rings. If we double the elevation, it only goes to 3.7. So you can see by doubling the elevation on a Goliath, our rings don't jump up that much. So I think we probably needed to pull that one 25% to be better off at trying to drop that. That's gonna be a tough albatross anyways, but uh, it is there. So best of luck, everybody. I hope you found this helpful. Please subscribe. Please hit the thumbs up button. Let me know how you do.